I always like the subject of mediums. And, and let's just clarify that word there, because sometimes that can be confusing, especially people who are new to painting. Sometimes when I meet somebody and they find out I'm an artist and specifically a painter, they'll say, what media do you work in? And, or they might say, what medium do you work in? And they're, they're really asking me, am I an oil painter? Am I a watercolorist? Am I an acrylic painter? That's what they're asking. And I might say, whatever it is I happen to be working on in my series of work, in this case, watercolor. But then we have mediums. And mediums are materials that we can add to the paint to change their characteristics. And mediums are not unique to watercolor. You have them in acrylic and oil as well. And so I, I always like to use the analogy that they are the other spices that we have when, when we have food. They can change the inherent qualities of the paint right out of the tube. And that might be something that helps you with your aesthetic process. So let's start out by taking a look at gum arabic and ox gall, which both affect flow. So here we've got two mixtures, two colors, and I, we just have water here. So we've got our, our mix, we've got our wash ready to go. And what we'll do is we'll just take some of the green and we'll put that down. We'll lay that wash down and clean off my brush real well. And we'll do the same thing with the yellow. And what should happen when we do that, we'll start to see, yeah, we start to see a migration there of color as we lay down that wash. It wants to blend together. And that can be a very desirable thing with watercolor, but sometimes people do not want that to happen. They wanna control watercolor a little bit more. That's where gum arabic comes into play. That's the binder that we already have in the paint. So we're adding a bit more of the binder. And to this wash of color, I'll just add just a little bit. You see, not too much. Almost looks like olive oil going into a mix there. So we just put a little of that. And that's more viscous than water. Remember, gum arabic is the binder that comes from the acacia tree. It's a, it's a tree resin. So this time what we do is we come back and we'll just kind of mix that in and then let's lay that down and we can actually see this is migrating more as it's wet this is going to make it more viscous so it's not going to want to blend quite as easily you're going to be able to control an edge a little bit more you'll still have some blending i mean you're working wet into wet with something but this is going to control that i, I like the unpredictability got a little green in there but that's okay i like the unpredictability sometimes of watercolor I really enjoy that. I enjoy the, the idea that water wants to go where water wants to go. And see here, we're not getting that migrating just as much. We get a little feathering along the edge, but that's gonna control that, that spread. And, and let's take a look at a little test that I've already done before, because here it's dry. And this is really nice to be able to see because in the wet area that we have here that was just water and watercolor paint, they really start to migrate over time. As it starts to dry, they keep bleeding and blending. And here we've got some migration of the yellow over into the green, but we've got a pretty harsh line there. So for anybody wanting a little bit more control, gum arabic can be a nice medium to add to their repertoire. Like gum arabic, oxcall also affects flow. But in, in this case, in, instead of with gum arabic, which controls the flow, this improves the flow. So this makes it more wet. It increases the wetting and flow of your paint. So here in our little, uh, our little dish, we've got our color uh, mixed with water. So that's just straight. So let's just take some of that first before we add oxcall. We come in here and we pull that across the surface. And we'll see where it starts to trail off and we pick up some of the texture of the paper. And that can be very desirable in some cases. That, that, there's a nice, you, know, you start to get this dry brush technique that can be great for texture. But this time, let's add a little bit of ox gall. Because again, in only about three to four drops, you may not want that effect and you may want it to flow more. Maybe you like big washes of color. That's, some, that's an aesthetic that you really like. So we just mix that in. And now we take that and we draw that off the surface and we get a lot more of that stroke of that wash before it starts to trail off. 
So again, when, when we're looking at, at both of these, gum arabic controls controls the flow really slows that down gives you more control over your watercolor paint and if you want to go the opposite direction oxgall is going to increase that wetting of the paint it's it's decreasing the surface tension of the water really increasing the flow